You know, uh, one thing that parents struggle the most with when they're thinking about whether to come to occupational therapy with their child is they struggle with, is this issue that I'm seeing with my child really so significant that I need to go see somebody or have my child tested? And you know, I was that parent, I raised two children that have pretty significant sensory processing problems and I remember being that parent wondering, is it just me or is there something I'm not seeing? Well, I can tell you, I did end up pursuing occupational therapy because I think I've told you I was the occupational therapist that sat in the occupational therapist waiting room. And it was probably one of the best things I ever did because my kids are still in occupational therapy and have made tremendous gains with their sensory processing and their ability to function in the world. But um, I think I can kind of summarize, what I like to do is summarize some key points to look at. These are some of the most common key areas that parents repeat to me often when they come in to see me. They, they'll make an appointment and say, do you think my child should be an OT? And they're usually sharing these points with me or I'm bringing these points up. First point is a lot of our kids with sensory processing issues appear to be kind of clumsy or awkward. They just don't seem to have the coordination that a lot of their peers have. So that would be point one. Point two would be um, a lot of these kids really like to uh, either touch everything around them or they avoid touching anything. So we're talking severities. And I always say, think of the good old fashioned bell-shaped curve. We're talking that you know, 10, five to 10% at the end of the curve. So that's another big factor we see. Also, oh, one of the biggest ones is transitions. And transitions are things like First we're gonna go here, then we're gonna to go to there. Now we're gonna go from this classroom to this place. Now we're gonna go from this activity to this activities. A lot of my friends really struggle with transitions. So that's another third point that you can look at. And a fourth point is oftentimes parents will describe their children to me as constantly in motion. In other words, they never stop until their head hits the pillow and then they pass out. So though, that gives you kind of four um, areas to look at. There are many more. I just kind of selected those four most common things that I hear. Um, another, I will, I will add one kind of freebie for you. If your child has issues with feeding and food textures, that's also another very strong indicator. So I hope that's helpful for y'all and you have a great day.